Well, there was another anti-mask demonstration in Brantford over the weekend, and this one got personal for the city's mayor. A group protested in front of the home of Mayor Kevin Davis, and he joins us this morning from his kitchen. No protesters out that window, right? <laughs> Just uh, a beautiful snow vista. Outside yes, this yes. Place. So, so what happened? Well, what happened was it was late Friday afternoon. I was actually at City Hall working, and my wife was here alone. I'll just give you the setting. We live in a private condominium complex, about 31 units. They're all standalone. And there's a private laneway that runs through the, uh, through the complex, and we're at the end. We're kind of a dead end. And so uh, I came home, and I found out that uh, there had been about 10 or 12 cars that came in and gathered in front of our home at the end of this private laneway. And uh, it was a protest of sorts, which when I came home and heard about it from my wife and my neighbors, I kind of wondered, well, why? It's, it was a group that's part, one of the groups that does these roadside uh, gatherings protesting the lockdown. So at first I didn't understand it because as a mayor, of course, we're not involved in those lockdown decisions. But once I saw the video, and there's a lot of video cameras in this complex, uh, once I saw it, I realized it probably was more of a show than a protest. And, you know, I had posted on my Facebook page about an hour before that a video where I was speaking out against their protest, not their right to protest, but their protest tactics and how it's generally unsafe, especially at this time with rising COVID. And so, you know, clearly uh, well, I saw it as an attempt to intimidate me, to silence me. Mm -hmm. And I Were there any charges late? Well, what happened was, you know, this is an intrusion upon the rights of my neighbors and my wife. She was mm -hmm. here by herself. And they're not used to this. I mean, I'm used to it. And it's really an intrusion upon their life and their liberty. And so, you know, I have to take it seriously, and I have. And the video evidence has been turned over to the Brantford Police Service for them to conduct an independent, independent of me, review of that evidence to determine if charges are warranted. And you said in an article in the uh, Brantford Expositor on the weekend that, you know, you didn't get into politics for this. You were a business person before. Has it made you rethink your life in public? Well, what it does, it creates a real internal dissension because I was raised very traditionally. It was hammered into me by my parents and grandparents, you know, that uh, you be a good neighbor, that you help and support your neighbors and provide them with assistance, uh, that you care for and protect your family. And also hammered into me was a very strong sense of community duty and community service. So they're, they're kind of competing, right? And uh, it creates, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very difficult thing to go through for a politician because uh, you gotta be concerned about your family and protecting your family. And that's, that's why I turned over the video evidence to the, to the police for them to determine what to do with it. And the other thing is, you know, don't we have a sense of fair play here in Canada? that is different than what it is in the U.S. And that sense of fair play, I think, says our homes, no matter who you are, are sacrosanct. Mm -hmm. you know, those should be places where you feel safe and secure. And so, you know, this kind of uh, a demonstration or protest, it's just totally inappropriate. And I don't think most people accept that it's appropriate. So you know, you It has, no, no question, it has... Like I said, I'm used to it as a litigation lawyer for, you know, 38 years. So I'm used to these high pressure situations. But, you know, other people aren't. Not every potential candidate for public office is. And so, I mean, if this becomes the norm, who's going to run for public office? So I'm mm -hmm. very concerned about those who, who follow me, whenever that might be, uh, that uh, they have a, that they're able to operate in an environment that's, you know, safe and secure. Right. shouldn't feel that if We've, you run for public office that you know your home's going to be invaded that's just right it's unbelievable we've, we've almost run out of time kevin uh but i wanted to ask you has it made you change your mind about running again, Will uh, you run again? uh well first of all I, the, the time to make that decision is not now in the middle okay. of a COVID crisis uh we have an election coming up next year starting may 1st and like any candidate who wants to run for office again, and I do, because there are many things that I've been working on, this council has been working on, that you can't finish in four years. You need basically two terms 
to finish much of what you're trying to accomplish. And we are trying to accomplish, I think, a lot of great things that will benefit our community. So, you know, my, my natural inclination is to run to finish the job, so to speak. Okay. Um, but this, this makes it harder, shall we say. Right. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing your story with us today, and it's nice to get an update from you. Thanks, Brentford Mayor Kevin Davis.